Who knew healing magic could be so much fun? In this world, it's not just about saving lives, it's about doing it in the most unconventional, uproarious way possible. Dramatic turn when he bumps into two of his classmates after school on a rainy day. The next thing they know, they are transported to a magical world through a mysterious and powerful spell. But there's a small problem. Yuzato was swept up in the vortex by accident. On top of that, he discovers that he possesses a rare talent for healing magic and ability that is highly sought after in this new realm. In order to survive, Yuzato must join forces with the rescue team, a group of tough and ruthless thugs, and endure their grueling training. Follow Yuzato as he learns the wrong way to use his healing powers in this odd and humorous otherworld fantasy filled with excitement and action. The story begins with an average high school kid named Yuzato frowning over the student council couple Ryosun Kazuki and Inukami Suzun while waiting for the rain to stop before going back to his home. Eventually, they explain that they aren't dating on their way back home as they shared their spare umbrella with Yuzato. Suddenly, they get summoned into another world as heroes by the king of the kingdom of Lingul to defeat the demon king. It gets found that Yuzato was just dragged along with Ryosun and Inukami since he didn't hear a bell ringing in his head. When the court assigns Mage Welsi to measure everyone's aptitude, they find out that Yuzato has the potential to use healing magic, which is considered the rarest in the world they were in. But unfortunately, just the moment they think of protecting Yuzato from Rose, the leader of the Kingdom Rescue Squad barges into the hallway of the King, and Ryerson makes a mistake by telling the truth in front of her. Nobody in the Kingdom trusted the method of Rose when it came to her training method, but she is the one who led her squad to save the lives of many soldiers when the demons attacked. When Yuzato reached the Kingdom Rescue Squad, it was full of bandits like men who respected Rose as their big sister, and everyone introduced themselves to Yuzato. Yuzato gets a room with Tong, who seems rather distressed regarding healing magic. Yuzato was still determining what would happen to him the next day as they would start training for him very soon. When Ryosun and Inukami are having their morning discussion discussing their future endeavors, Princess Syria comes up asking them about Yuzato, and even she is distressed after knowing that he was called in by the Kingdom Rescue Squad worrying about their training process. In the afternoon, Ryosun and Inukami end up barging into the Kingdom Rescue Squad without even informing everyone and find out the diary that had carried the thoughts of Yuzato as he kept on going through his days in the training. Suddenly, they get called by Sigrus as Yuzato, and Rose come back from their outdoor training to train across the hedge. The uncanny sight of Yuzato's training shocking everyone since Rose kept increasing the heavy weight on his back as time progressed. The princess also came to meet Yuzato. Wyerson and Inukami were inspired after seeing Yuzato doing great in the unknown place when all they did was worry about him as the day continued. The hellish training of Rose increased the physical abilities of Yuzato, and according to her, his sole goal was to treat the injured who had been left on the battlefield. The sudden travel with Rose went through a market as he continued carrying a heavy backpack as they finally reached the city's outer walls. It seems that they are about to go to the outside area in the forest where the monsters dwell regularly, and they set up a camp while Rose instructs him to hunt a grand grizzly. Even though Yu Zeto refused to accept his quest initially, he had to comply because he couldn't return to the kingdom without ending his quest. Suddenly, a white bear starts chasing him down as he continues to run off. But the moment he gathers his strength to fight back against the grizzly, the number increases in the pack and becomes a total of three them instead of one. 
Finally, when he jumped into the water to escape their grasp, the backpack became heavy and started pulling him down, so he fought back the momentum to jump back onto the land. Yuzato heals an injured rabbit in the forest, which helps him detect danger from a distance as the grizzly bears are still looking for him everywhere. When he finally opened up his backpack, he discovered it was full of portable food and equipment to camp outside in the forest. Soon he and the rabbit reached the nest of grizzlies to defeat the alpha bear, but the sight of it playing with its cub makes him soft. When he witnesses a massive snake in the forest, he knows that he has to get out of the forest really soon but it soon gets worse as he notices the dead bear carcasses inside the forest, which was definitely done by the snake. Yuzata's motive inside the forest quickly changes as he notices the bear cubs crying for their dead parents in front of his eyes and sets his target on the huge snake. Meanwhile, the Demon King was concerned about their winning rate being manipulated in the battle against the humans because of Rose and her army as they kept on healing the injured and sending them back out again. Even the Demon Commander and Mira feared battling against Rose for her unbelievable bravery as she fought to the death against her mentor and only lost an eye in the fight as she returned alive. But this time... Amira makes a promise to battle against Rose on her own to win the fight if the time comes. On the other hand, Yuzato ends up running into the vicious snake once again in the forest, and to save the bear cubs from its grasp, he gets wounded in the process, but when that isn't fearful enough, he also gets affected by the poison. In the end, also the bear cub joins the fight to help Yuzato and they avenged the death of the grizzly bears together. But the situation quickly changes as the snake gets up once again, but Rose arrives on the scene with the help of the rabbit from before. Also, the rabbit is a pet of Rose whom she sent to keep looking out for him, and the snake was the monster Sigrus failed to kill during the previous Demon Lord's invasion. They finally end the journey outside the forest by taking the bear cub with them on their way inside the kingdom. Yuzato woke up in his room in front of Tong, and he headed out to the bear cub they rescued yesterday to feed him an apple while naming him Bluey. Suddenly, Rose comes up to him, claiming he passed to stand on the same battlefield as her by cornering the monster snake in the forest even though his target was stolen. Also, she claimed that she was proud of him for having distinct characteristics from the usual healers, physical abilities, and a strong-willed spirit that the other two renowned healers in the kingdom couldn't achieve in their lifetime. Not only that, but also, Rose claimed that she would be on the front line with her to heal the injured soldiers since the demon army is quickly approaching as time passes. Knowing that the heroes will be there fighting for their lives against the demon army, Yuzato doesn't want to be the only one doing nothing and keep sitting on his ass. So his sole mission from now on with the Kingdom Rescue Squad is to bring the person who is about to be killed even if they have to steal them away to save their life. Yuzato finally feels like he has become a true member of the rescue squad, and the next step of his training begins from that instant. When his first training with the bear above on his back ends in the afternoon, Rose gives him the next task, claiming that he will have to run around the city to do the same thing while she goes meeting the king in his castle to answer to his summoning. The king was concerned about the report made by the escorts who tagged with Kazuka during his training, as there were fewer monsters than usual in the plains. Rose was also bothered by the report, so she wanted to scout near the borders right across the river to guarantee the area's safety before the training began. However, she didn't want to forget those guys who died battling against the Demon King and blamed only her arrogance for their deaths. 
The only way for her to forget her scene is to create subordinates that won't die. And she has finally found the embodiment of her ideal. Yuzato. The next day when Yuzato was running around the town carrying Bluey on his head, people were looking right at him with their usual glances like they were expecting him. Then, some guy behind him suddenly starts calling him while running, but he collapses on the ground, losing unconsciousness. When Yuzato finishes healing him, he introduces himself as Olga Fleur of the Kingdom Rescue Squad and claims that even though he is a healer himself, his healing magic only works on others, not on himself that much. His sister, Olruru, is also a healer, just like him, and suddenly, a concerned mother enters the scene with her wounded child while someone is looking at Yu Zeto from the dark corner. Yu Zeto helps the mother carry her child to the clinic where he meets Olga's sister Olruru as they begin the treatment. The amazing healing magic of Olga was quite different from Yuzata's one, who transferred the mana into the patient's body to heal from the inside. Before Yuteso takes his leave from the place, Olga expresses that he shouldn't end up hating Rose for being herself and gets surprised by seeing the optimism of Yuzato. He felt like Rose had finally met the one she always needed to meet. She would not be alone on the battlefield the next time she stepped. When Yuzato is about to begin his run again, a half-beast girl comes up to him and lends him her vision of the future, claiming that the future can be chosen by him. But, unfortunately, in the vision, he sees all the soldiers of Lingle dead under the feet of the Demon King, and the girl claims that he must return the vision, calling it a favor. After listening to her, Yuzato feels like it was precognition and runs like hell, forgetting about his training and Bluey. Meanwhile, Demon King's commander Amira is busy building a bridge along with her demon army when the second core soldier of the demon army comes around, nagging her around. They were just one step away from completion, and suddenly, the arrival of an unknown entity came down, crashing on their plan just like a cursed meteor. The bridge gets blown off by none other than Rose who was there to keep an eye on the plans of the Demon King. She now believes that she will have to work and speed up faster if the Demon Soldiers are catching up in this speed. Yuzato is still living in a real-life nightmare after seeing the vision from the little half-beast girl in the town as he gets awakened by Rose herself. She claims that Hiro Kazuki has already finished his training and will have to tag along with Hiro Suzun since the king requested him to be there personally. They considered it last minute training in case they needed a healer, and Yuzato was permitted to bring Bluey with him if he wanted to. Suzun was surprised to see Yuzato after getting informed by the castle guard that some other person would be tagging along with her on the journey. Rose decides to warn Suzun about the uncertainties that could bring in the training and claims that she was allowed to be reckless to some extent. Healing magic is useful, but she shouldn't consider it omnipotent because it doesn't work on a dead person. Yuzato was surprised to see Rose warning her because she had never done something like that for anyone. On their way, Suzun claims that Kazuki was able to pull through his training but after being tired out by the whole training, he has been sleeping since the previous day. Yuzato introduces his bear cub to Suzun, and just when she is about to pet him with her hands, she gets slapped away by the bear even though he is sleeping. Suddenly, they meet a bunch of bandits on their way to the vicinity of the plains, where the monster population is truly high. The bandits were amazed to see Yuzato carrying around a blue grizzly cub like Bluey on his back. But since Bluey is a cub, they decided to run into Yuzato and the others with their weapons. But they get intercepted by the lightning magic power of Suzun, 
and Yuzato is ready in case one of the bandits dies from the magic's attack. Unfortunately, when they are busy beating up the bandits, a herd of full boars runs into them, and one of them knocks out Yuzato and Suzun both when he tries to save Suzun from the attack. She instantly gets unconscious, and just when he finishes using his healing power on her, they fall into a river with a waterfall. They somehow manage to drift to shore, and Yuzato passes out while dragging her up, but wakes up instantly while she is making a speech. They didn't know how far they were from where they went missing, but they had to make a camp anyways to live in the dark for the night. At night, when they finish eating after making a fire and catching fish, Suzune expresses that she has no intention or wish to return to the previous world as she finally has the chance to release herself. Yuzato has the same thought as her since he was able to change his life in the new world. Suzune truly wanted to protect the country so that it could one day become where she truly belongs. The conversation led Suzune to express her thoughts about having a closer relationship with Yu Zeto, which makes him go to sleep after being embarrassed. The next morning when they start their journey, they meet Venom Monkeys, and one of them ends up biting her hand, thinking that it will be safe, which later gets healed by Yu Zeto instantly. Suddenly, they see Bluey and the castle guard running into them as Suzune makes Yu Zeto feel like she is in a different dimension than she existed. Yu Zeto and Suzune reached the king safely after their disaster, and the king apologized to everyone for rushing their training, but he had other ways to face their incoming problem. Rose added the information of the Demon Lord's army building their bridges at the edge of their borders to cross over the river and also informed them of the destruction of it, which might help them to prepare for a few days more. Kazuka came running to Yuzato and Suzun since he worried about their safety and explained that Suzun trusts Yuzato with her life, knowing he wouldn't let her die that easily. When Yuzato comes into Rose's room after freshening up, Rose informs him that they will not head out in the early stages of the battle as Tong and the others will cover for them, knowing that he will be an easy target for the demon army. He gets officially given the Kingdom Rescue Squad uniform, which is waterproof and dirt-proof, as he looks worthy of it after wearing it. But the air in the room gets heavy as soon as Rose states that he should value his life more than anything, so he shouldn't be sacrificing his own life over anything. When Yuzato is about to sleep at night, Kazuka calls him from outside and informs him that the battle with the Demon Lord's army has already started. He claims that he has run away from the castle as he is afraid of fighting knowing that the demon army will also intend to finish him off. Yuzato stated that even though he fights as a hero beside him on the battlefield or not, they will still remain friends, and that is a fact. The strong will of Yuzato makes Kazuki change his mind about leaving the battlefield, and even though he doesn't know if he will be enough as a hero, he wants to help his friend Yuzato and Suzun. They promise to save the country and its people from the grasp of the demon army as Kazuki prepares to leave for the castle to join as a hero once again. But, on the other hand, Suzune looks at them from afar and gets noticed by Yuzato. Yuzato states that he doesn't want him and Suzune to fight for their lives against the demon army, knowing they shouldn't risk their lives. However, he wanted her to know that he would respect their wishes to leave the battlefield if they wanted to. The next day, the news of the demon army lord's attack spreads throughout the kingdom by order of the king. They aim to intercept the army, with Kazuki and Suzun taking the vanguard under Commander Sigrus. 
Rose makes a speech in the hall room of the Kingdom Rescue Squad for his men and orders Oruru and Yuzato that they shouldn't get careless since it will be their first war. The bridge between the Demon Army's own and the Kingdom came close to finally finishing, and the fierce armored general of the Demon King was desperate to fight. Even though Amira was well known about the Kingdom Rescue Squad, the army general felt they won't be a match for him, considering that they were humans. When Amira considers the men of Rose as monsters, the general gets fired up, thinking that he will finally enjoy the battle because they will satisfy him on the battlefield with their skills. The time for the battle finally came, and Yuzato asked for Rose's advice about the Demon Lord's army since it was her second time fighting it. Even though the demons looked like humans with horns and tan skin, they possessed a superhuman level of physical strength and dark magic. Rose decides to boost his self-confidence by praising his strength as he takes his time to train to face the calamity in front of them. Suzun and Kazuki show up to meet him before they go forward to the front line of the king's army under the guidance of the elite army. Suzun claims that she has found her real self after entering the new world, as she is not an honor student anymore and is not at a loss from her previous life. The change she achieved after going missing with Yu Zato is noticeable in the eyes of Kazuki and she claims that she has a reason to make it back. The elite army captain makes the magic squadron go to the front line for the sake of their kingdom of Lingal as the demonic army presents itself on the battlefield. Kazuki and Suzun realize that fighting with the opposition is their only option, and Suzun takes the lead, flashing her lightning magic and crashing down on the opposition. Yuzato and everyone from the Kingdom Rescue Squad could hear the battle begin as they were in charge of covering the injured, but their turn to escape was available in front of them if things started to look too bad, according to Rose. So Rose orders her men, including Tong, to go forward as she and Yuzato will head out to the front lines once the time passes. Yuzato was vastly worried about his friends, and Tung's men kept on bringing in wounded soldiers to be cared for by Yuzato. The wounded soldier of the king's army talks about a huge black monster, and the description made by the woman gets noted in Yuzato's head. The black armored monster in the demon army squad keeps executing the soldiers like they are nothing but ants in front of him. He continues to look for a bigger challenge, getting no excitement, thinking there is no need for him on the battlefield. Just the moment a wounded soldier in the king's army starts moving around talking on his own in fear, it gets noticed by the monstrous Black Knight. The instant he is about to finish him off, the wounded soldier goes missing making him realize that Amira was right when she talked about the troublesome beings called kidnappers in the human army. On the other hand, the wounded soldier gets saved by Tung's companion as he carries him inside the tent of the Kingdom Rescue Squad. Finally, Rose realizes it is her and uses it as time to get back on track in the front line as she leaves the tent in the care of Olga and Oruru while heading out with Yuzato. On their way, Rose explains that she will teach him a lesson on how to overcome the war since he doesn't know how to do something like take a life. Yuzato thinks of the information regarding an entity of an enemy clad in black armor that uses some troublesome magic as they head on. He promises that he will not let anyone die as long as they are within his reach while Suzun and Kazuk efface the monstrous armor being discussed by everyone on the battlefield. The moment the human army goes head on with the armor being slashing their swords inside him, the magic released by him gets released like spears toward the human army. Also, the reversal of dark magic coming out of the entity makes the soldiers bleed, who attack him abruptly as they fall to the ground. 
Kazuki and Suzun keep standing flabbergasted, witnessing the overpowered entity before them, not realizing what they should do at first. Meanwhile, Yu Zeto uses her flexible movements against the demon army as they can't land any of their targets on her while he escapes with wounded soldiers. The sight of him floating in the air with two armored soldiers impresses them all, as they couldn't do anything even after ganging up on him at once. The scene of dead soldiers in front of him reminds him of the vision given by the little half-beast girl which pains him continuously. He worries about his friends as some demon soldier runs into him, trying to slash him with his sword, but he gets saved by a soldier. The soldier then informs him about the front-line situation with the armored monster as Yu Zeto starts running to reach their location. Suzun and Kazuka take on the armored monster while leaving the others to the normal soldiers. Unfortunately, when Kazuki uses his magic on the monster, the dark reversal magic also works on him, which takes him down while leaving no wound or anything on his armor, hitting straight inside his internals. Suzu notices that the other soldiers face the same thing, and the place of the body they hit on the monster ends up hitting them in the end, reflecting their own attack on them. The realization of Suzun amazes the armored monster, and even after realizing the situation, Suzun hits the monster with her lightning magic while keeping it minimal. After sealing the monster's vision, Kazuki and Suzun attack him outside his field of visual, thinking that it will work, but it surely doesn't since the attack was reflected on them. But not the attack that Suzun did on his back. And while Kazuki was buying time distracting the monster, Suzun made a surprise attack, slashing his insides with her sword surprisingly. Unfortunately, the moment she thought the attack would not get reflected, she fell down, bleeding on the ground pretty quickly, while Kazuki faced the same fate in the hands of it. The black armored monster explains that the armor that he is wearing is made out of mana which acts on his real body like a barrier. So there was no point in attacking surprisingly from the beginning. So instead, he stood there thinking that it had always been like this, untouchable from everyone, including the demons or humans, even his own parents. Just the moment the back knight is about to finish off wounded Suzun, Yu Zeto enters the scene yelling as he makes an overpowered punch on the Black Knight with all the force and mana built into his fist. The entry of Yu Zeto felt like a hurricane to the Dark Knight as he was desperate to save his friends while Kazuki was lying on the ground wounded along with injured Suzun. However, he quickly starts healing all of them, pulling Suzun out from the brink of death and healing the hole in his body made by the enemy's sword. The Dark Knight throws the sword in Yuzata's way when he is busy healing his friend and moves at the right moment. The break in the armor of the Dark Knight was quite visible, and the person inside was actually a woman. On the other hand, Suzun couldn't help but wonder how the punch made by Yuzato broke the armor since the demon armor is made up of magic and a powerful spell providing protection reflecting the attacker's hit on the attacker. Even though Yu Zeto didn't want to fight, the situation made his move in a certain direction, with only one option in his hands. The coating of healing magic gave him the boost to move forward as each hit continued to break the armor and make it flabby. The spear coming out of Dark Knight's armor goes through the hands of Yu Zato in one slice, but it somehow gets melted and transformed into slime as the magic didn't work out. Suzun couldn't help but wonder what was happening since the Dark Knight couldn't reflect any attack and was breaking on its own with force made by Yu Zato's strikes. Finally, the Dark Knight gets out the sword made out of mana but Yuzata's confidence breaks through the demon guard as the woman in the armor falls down on the ground. 
He notices that it is just a girl inside the armor of Dark Knight as the Demon Army soldiers continue to wonder what just happened as they didn't expect to see the end like that. However, his healing magic was on a whole different level and he continued to heal everyone injured on the battlefield while chatting with Suzune. Kazuki regains consciousness, and he can't help but wonder how his friend Yuzato has defeated the infamous Dark Knight, and his wounds are fully healed. He notices the ongoing battle and wants to join the Omi's front line. Thank you for watching and for more videos like this. Remember to hit the subscribe button and turn on bell notifications so you can experience future uploads. And if you have any suggestions for the next video, comment below so we can work on it right away. Thank you.